Hey friends, today we are working on a Razer PowerCore E90. Now we're doing a little bit of hot wiring today. I'm tired of these stupid scooters. You have to be spinning, you know, you have to be going three miles an hour or whatever to activate the motor. And the reason for that is a motor also works as a generator. Uh, in, in DC case, my father, the electrician that made all this possible is outside somewhere. I'm not sure what he's up to. But anyway, so we did a little bit of hot wiring. Now keep in mind, you are going to be bypassing everything on this circuit board that controls the minimum voltage that you can run to, all of that good stuff. So if you're wanting to just hotwire it to where the battery just gives power straight to the motor all the time, this is how you do it. But keep in mind, you will have no way of knowing what the voltage is on your battery. What I would strongly recommend in that case as well is to add in a voltage meter that ties in you could tie it into your switch if you don't know enough about this then probably shouldn't be messing with it anyway but you'd want to tie it in somewhere past the switch so you're going to have power coming from your battery you can trace that trace it down to your switch and then there's going to be a power wire going to your switch and back from your switch and if you were to put in a little voltage display on that you could even cut out a little plastic piece here mount it on the side or whatever and then, of course, do your research based on whatever battery you're running. You wouldn't want to run it below a certain voltage. That would be the best way to monitor all this now. That might be what I end up doing. I just made me a little adapter harness so I could run my RC batteries on it. Turns out that original battery that's charging over there apparently is garbage. Is there a lead-acid battery or something? They're not great. We're going to go on Amazon see if we can find us a better lithium battery. Or I might just rig something up to run RC batteries all the time. But, again... Keep in mind, there is no low voltage protection now whatsoever. But anyway, tear, you know, just tearing into it. Pretty straightforward. Not much to it. All of these panels, I know some of these models had different panels on them or whatever, based on the videos I've seen, but you're going to have four or six screws. In this case, it's six. Two, two, two. You pop that off. In there, you're going to see that box. Now, that box has different clips and things inside you see it's got here let me zoom out a bit it's got hooks in there there and there that hook into these there and there there and there you can see i just broke mine i don't really care i was about to trash this scooter anyway but yeah theoretically i guess if you can squeeze this together enough you can actually just you know pop, pop the top off now of course you take the three screws that bolted in here off first obviously I'm not even sure where those screws are now but i'm sure i'll find them here in a second there they are right there but anyway then you could pop this apart potentially without breaking it and again a lot of this you know has common sense and play with it what i did is i traced these wires find out that button just completes the circuit that's all it does you want to trace those wires back here find out where they go and then what you want to do is the one that gets power already you can see there if you follow that line here, let me see if I can grab a pointer here again. Where did I leave that? There we go. So, let's see if I can get this enough here. So that is your power wire there. So that one we left alone. But then, when it comes back from the switch, it would go here. And like I said, it has to sense, this relay, somehow with all the electronics on here, it has to sense voltage from the motor first, which, which is why you have to be driving it, for it to kick on. All we did is we broke off that wire from the back, as you can see there, I won't even need to point at it, you can see there's six wires, or at least there was. Now, that one is broken off. So we ran that wire from there to here. Now, this might vary per models too, but basically we had to figure out which one of these was the power and which one of these was the ground. And the best way to do that, of course, is to get the motor spinning and then use a tester, whether you're using a light tester or a voltmeter or whatever. Just got to figure that out. But it turns out it only gets ground once that motor starts spinning as well. So then we had to run a ground, dedicated ground, follow from your battery. Pretty straightforward. Some of this stuff is pretty basic. If you're not into it this much, then maybe you shouldn't be messing with it. But anyway, like I said, I was just using an RC battery. And I'll plug it back in in a second here. Because again, I just made me a little adapter so I could use my RC battery. We're going to try to get a nicer lithium one on Amazon. But anyway, ran a ground from there. Soldered it on a little bit, bit of a hack job, but works. To the ground on, was it the relay, I guess? And then the power wire there. And now, and now, 
when you push that button, that motor spins. So pretty straightforward. Probably what I'm just going to tell the kids to do is when I get another 12 volt battery, I'll tell them run it for a bit and then plug it in when you're done. And hopefully they don't run it down too far to mess it up. I'll just tell them to not run it for more than, you know, 10, 15 minutes at a time before they charge it. And we might be safe. But again, keep in mind everything that's on here is going to get bypassed. So if you're not willing to take that risk, maybe don't mess with it. Or like I said, you could put a voltmeter in there, just a little display, mount it somewhere and tell, you know, kids or whoever's riding it that do not let it get below this voltage. Otherwise, you're going to mess up your batteries. These lithiums are pretty sensitive to all that. But anyway, again, quick video on how to hotwire if you want to screenshot this or take a look. Again, you got to cut on this model, it might vary this one and solder it to there. As you can see, we did the yellow there and then take ground straight from the battery your ground and solder it to the other pin. And now you've bypassed everything and works on a switch. So interesting deal. Probably not too many people that want to do this, but for those that do, here you have it. Hope this video helps somebody, and as always, may God bless you. And I guess credit to my great dad there for not being photogenic and the one that made all this possible, because I would have been clueless. <laughs> hey, take care, guys.